Jeremy Cook here, and today I wanted to show off my, my new clock. It's called the, the JC Devices Clock 742. The reason for this is it's seven segments. It's 42 millimeters from here to here, so 742. It's also backwards as 24-7 clock, so I think that's pretty cool. As you can see here, it's 1604, which is the same thing as 404, but this is in 24 hour time. So I guess I guess that's appropriate for it being a 24 seven clock. Other cool thing is it runs off a WeMOS S2 mini board. So it can log on to local network, get the time off that. So you don't have to set it. This is just 405 now. I didn't even have to worry about that. And you can touch it to display other stuff. Maybe I'll do a temperature sensor or something else in the future. Looking under kind of the, under the hood here, in the bottom there are individual addressable LEDs. I'm really happy with how this project has turned out so far. Follow along to see how I made it. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. Here's a 3D model of the clock 742. Probably the most unique thing about this is the top few PCB is actually designed as the diffuser. So you've got solder mask on the, the blank parts and then no solder mask on the parts that are meant to allow light. If we take off the top PCB, we can see the light separation layer on the top here, I've got space for GPIO pins that will be broken out. And if I take this light separator out, this is the PCB on the back, or kind of the design. This and as well as the top PCB were exported into KiCad as DXFs. That way I can make the outer cut layers and everything else based on that. Pretty easy to do if you just go to Sketches, Save as DXF. That Save as DXF thing is really great. And you can export that and import it into KiCad without, without much problem. I also made this thicker light separator, basically so I can, I can attach the Wemos S2 Mini to header pins. That way I can put it on and take it off really easily. Taking a quick look at the schematic for this, you've got the Wemos S2 Mini board here, and then you've got basically a chain of, of LEDs, starting with the matrix LEDs, digit one LEDs, digit two, colon, digit three, digit four. And then I've got this so it passes digital out. So the idea behind this is that eventually I'll have several clock faces that can kind of line up and have different time zones on them. Thought that'd be pretty cool ultimately. I've also got the GPIO broken out. Here's the PCB as it exists today. You've got the Wemos S2 Mini board here and that's piping all these outputs to a GPIO section with ground, 3.3 volts, five volts ground, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, just, just a little preview, I guess, I've got the, the touch buttons actually routed to the sides here. So I'm thinking what I will do is actually route them through a conductive screw. That way you can touch the, the sides and it'll do interesting things. The bottom here, the idea here was that I have all this wasted space with the Wemos S2 Mini, so why not make this into a display? Get the L LED power in here, push your, your inputs in through there, and then out through there, through all the LEDs in the middle. This actually turned out pretty well when I was testing because I used, just used an Arduino Uno to input power, digital input, and ground. The digital input and digital output are also broken out here just in case you need them for some reason. So it should be a very versatile board, and I'm excited to see what I'll eventually do with it. Big thanks to PCB Wave for sponsoring this video. The boards got here quickly, and the quality was excellent as always. This will be on the front, and that'll be on the back. Maybe we'll do a little experiment right now. So, yeah, that's that's the idea. Interesting. I wonder how wonder how this shines through compared. It's kind of cool to see how this uh, this project evolved. So this is the first first version, right there, and then it's the second version and. Pretty much exactly matches up with, with this. Zero, rev one, and there was what it came out to be so far.
plug this in. And there we go. It displays that. Some some numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero. Looks pretty good. Right now I don't have these lit up, these 27 LEDs, individual LEDs. And one thing about this, you know, you can kind of see it through the sides. At least I'm making some progress and I think I'm on the right track with this. Next step, I'm printing a black shroud for this. So I'll be able to test it out a little bit better with this. And it has some individual pixels for this, so it won't just be lit up. I think eventually what I might do is instead of using the LDO, I'll use a level shifter from the from the Wemos. I'm not even sure that's totally totally necessary because it's working now with the 3.3 volt signal. But for now, you know, this looks pretty cool. So right on time, this black black PLA piece got printed. So I'm gonna go ahead and sub that out for this. A little space for it to make make it easier to hit the button. And probably most importantly, well, most importantly, it's black, which should bleed between the, the different segments a little less. It's also got this grate here, which which will be should be nice. So I'll go ahead and swap that out. There you go, that fits nicely. It interferes with the capacitor a little bit, but hopefully in the final design that capacitor won't be there. Something I put on while I was trying to diagnose stuff. So then you can get out the buttons a bit easier. All right, let's see how that works. Does seem to look significantly better. Still a bit of bleeding on the edges. And I think, honestly, I think probably what I'll do in the final version, coat, coat the whole thing with solder mask on the front and the back. And then I'll have a copper layer in the front and the back too with just the copper layer cut out for this. So it'll look mostly green, or kind of this greenish color where it's kind of, kind of beige here. Make it fade into the background a lot better, I think. There we go. Contrast seems a lot better with the red. I think the, um, maybe the green blocks the red a little bit more. I guess that kind of makes, kind of makes sense. And green dots, they're, they're diffusing a lot more with the, with the solder mask, but the red seems to catch that a lot better. Still a little bit of bleed through, but just something to think about for, for the future. Then of course, I've got these grid separations down here. And you can see it, it works out nicely with the, with the pixels. My idea for this originally, and still my idea is that, you know, if I turn this into a product, I could have something here where people could 3D print their own patterns and just make a cool, cool shape or something. Maybe I'll still do that, but for now, I think it looks, looks pretty cool like that. Oh, you know, also I turned the, uh, the brightness on this down, so that could certainly contribute to how much light is, is peeking through. Kind of a cool view of it on the back. You can see everything coming through. So after a bit more work, I've got this programmed to run a web server. So check this out. Turn this on, oh, turn it on, close, close red, turn it off, and then turn that on. So after quite a bit more tinkering, I'm proud to announce that this is actually a clock. It basically logs into my Wi-Fi and gets the time off, off the NTP server, server, which is Network Time Protocol. So now it's a functional clock, turn it on, and, and it goes to the right time. Right now it's in military time or 24 hour time, so it's 2020, which is, I guess, 820. Pretty happy with this. At some point, I'm going to make another revision of this board and, and do some neat improvements on, on it. So, you know, stay tuned for that. And of course, getting the NTP time is important. I mostly copied that from some other code. So again, I'll link that in the description. The other thing that was important was separating out the second digit of the hour, first digit of the hour, and first and second digits of the minute. Basically what you do is you do a time info and do a modulus 10, which is basically the, the remainder of what happens when you divide by 10. And then for the first digit, you do a divide by 10. So if it's 12 o'clock, you divide by 10 and the first digit is one, and then you do a, a modulus, the remainder is two. So it's actually much easier than I thought it would be. So that that worked out pretty well. Those are just kind of the highlights. I'll probably put the code up. It's, it's in very rough shape, but if you want to look at it, certainly you can. So after a bit more experimentation, I've been playing with the, the touch, touch sensitivity on the ESP32 chip. So you can see I've got this hooked up. Look at that. Changes the color of the lights. A lot of different things I could do that with that in the future. Really looking forward to trying this out a little bit more.
look at that. Very nice. 